This is Cam from Pierce Park Sailing Center here with another episode of Ocean Science After School. Today we're going to be talking about tides. Before I start today's lesson, you're going to want to head to pierceparksailing.org slash OSAS to find the activity. There you'll find a crossword puzzle and all of the answers to the clues can be found within today's video. If you've ever been to the beach, you've probably noticed that sometimes the water is at a different level. This is because throughout the day, the water rises and falls. These changes are called tides. When the water is reaching its highest point, this is called high tide, and as it gets to its lowest point, it reaches low tide. As the water continues to get higher, this is called flooding, and when the water starts to go down, getting closer to low tide, it's called ebbing. In most parts of the world, we see two high tides and two low tides each day. It takes about six hours to get from high tide to low tide, and vice versa. So it takes a little over 12 hours to get from one high tide to the next. The height difference between high and low tide is called the tidal range. This range can be different depending on where you are in the world. Here in Boston Harbor, it's about a 10 foot difference between high and low tide, but some places can have a very larger or smaller difference. For example, at the Bay of Fundy in Canada, there's about a 53 difference between high and low tide. So the water can go up 53 feet in just six hours. There are certain times when these ranges can be different, but we'll talk about that later. So you're probably wondering, what causes tides? There's two main things that cause the tides to occur. The first one is the gravitational pull from the sun and the moon, and the other is from the Earth's rotation. When one side of the Earth is directly facing the moon or opposite of it, there's a gravitational pull that is pulling the water and causes it to bulge in certain areas, and this creates the high tide. But because it's pulling the water from other parts of the world, there's a low tide in those spots. And because the Earth is always rotating, and the Moon is revolving around the Earth, we see a change about every six hours. Sometimes, the Moon's gravitational pull can be stronger than other times. For example, when there's a full or a new Moon, there's a stronger gravitational pull. When this happens, the tidal range is going to be a lot larger. So, the high tide will be normal than high tide on a regular day, and low tide will be lower than normal. This is called a spring tide. Spring tides usually occur about twice a month. Another type of tide is called a neap tide. Neap tides have the opposite effect of spring tides. They occur during the first and third quarter moon, which is when the moon looks to be about half full. During neap tides, high tide won't be as high as it would be on a normal day, and low tide isn't as low as it normally would be. So now you're probably wondering, why do I care? Why is it important to know about the tides? Tides are very important for sailors. If you're navigating through shallow waters, you're definitely going to want to know when it's low tide because it can be very easy for your boat to run aground if you don't know how deep it is. There might be one area where at high tide it's safe to go, but then at low tide, your boat won't fit. High tide was also important to know. If there's a bridge, your boat might be able to fit under it at low tide, but at high tide, your boat might be too tall. So at the beginning of the day, if you go out at low tide, you won't have a problem clearing the bridge, but on your way back in, you might not be able to fit under it. So you wanna know what time high tide is to plan your trip accordingly. Even if you're not planning on going out on a boat, it can still be helpful to know about the tides. For example, if you're planning a day at the beach and you set up all your chairs close to the water at low tide, that might be a good idea at the beginning of the day, but when the tide starts to come up, you're gonna get pretty wet and you're gonna to have to move everything to the back of the beach. Luckily, tides are very easy to predict. Because scientists know the exact position of the moon and we know how fast the earth rotates, we're able to predict what time high tide will be and what time low tide will be pretty much every day, and they're pretty accurate. When you wanna check the tides for a certain day, you can look at a tide table. Tide tables tell us what time high and low tide will be each day, as well as how deep they will be, depending on where you are. Once again, this is Cam from Pierce Park Sailing Center. Thanks for joining me on this lesson about tides and be sure to stay tuned for more episodes of Ocean Science After School.